Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And yes, it's time once again for the main event of the AM. And leading the way, your host, Modern Guide to the Markets, Walker England here, speaking on behalf of DailyFX.com. Now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our Tuesday webinar event as we focus on trading tools and tactics. Yes, over the course of the next hour, we're going to be talking about the tactic of stop placement. Had a lot of concerns in our last risk management webinar about where to exactly place your stop. So I want you to leave here with several different techniques that you can use in your trading strategies for just that, placing your stops. So that is a broad topic that we need to get down to business on. So let's do just that. And first off, I do want you to pay close attention to the GoToWebinar software. Now, there is a chat box which is available to you. And, of course, you can ask your questions, post your thoughts and concerns throughout your presentation. Secondarily, I will need charts to work off of, so if you have requests, even though this isn't an analytics-driven webinar, hey, we can indeed work some examples along the way, so feel free to get those out as well. Of course, I do have a few risk disclaimers as we kick off today's program. Yes, first things first, I do need to let you know that markets are risky, and because we can lose money, we should ultimately be trading with risk capital, also known as monies that we can afford to lose. Equally as important, last but certainly not least, my final slide of the day, I do have my hypothetical trading disclaimer. Now, today going to be a great presentation. We're going to have a lot of fun, but I do need to remind you up front, yours truly on this end of the mic, I cannot guarantee you returns inside of your live trading account. And of course, past performances of any strategies discussed here within are certainly not indicative of future results. So please give that a read as we kick off today's program. And I want to start things off with a quick poll question. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, inquiring minds want to know, do you have a risk management plan? Now, I asked this question in our previous Tips, Tools, and Tactics webinar on risk management, but we had a different emphasis. Our previous emphasis was on risk-reward ratios and the trader's number one mistake. And of course, part of any risk management strategy should be just that. How much am I making when I'm right relative to when I am wrong? Now, of course, we're going to work that into today's webinar, but I want to continue our focus on risk management by taking that topic one step further. Now, I want to take our risk management plan and actually define where we want to exit the market. Because for me, this is the final step and arguably going to be the big one, right? When do we admit when we are wrong? When do we hit that fire exit and say, hey, enough is enough already. Just go ahead and get me out of there. And that's arguably one of the hardest things for traders to do. I know, I've been there, where we have to say that we're wrong. We did our best, our analysis, hey, just didn't work out. The market moved against us for whatever reason, but just get me out of there. That's sometimes the best feeling that we can have, right, is just getting that bad trade off the books. It's kind of refreshing because we can move forward and start looking for other opportunities. Now, traditionally, when we look at a price graph, right, we're looking at the trend, we're looking at key bars, swing highs, swing lows, all these different forms of technical analysis. Well, one of the easiest ways to simply add a stop in any position on any strategy is to look at the swing highs and the swing lows. Now, I know this may sound fairly straightforward, but how many times do we ignore the peaks and valleys and price on our graph? Well, we shouldn't. 
we should look at this price for what it is, and regardless if I'm a bull, bear, or either, regardless if I'm trading the dollar, yen, jar, trading oil, a CFD, or anything in between, this graph is telling me something. And I know many of you have spent uh, the hour with Mr. James Stanley talking about price action. So this might be a key review, but let's look at today's view on the dollar yen. Notice how price is consolidating between Friday's high and this is going to be Monday's low. Now these two points are going to be intuitive places to manage risk because they're acting as support and resistance. Support and resistance, again, just a fancy way of saying a ceiling or a floor in price, but if price breaks above resistance, well, it's actually going to be a bullish breakout. And if I'm looking to sell, again, let's say we're looking for a reversal for whatever reason, all of a sudden I should see that this is a barrier where if price starts to move up and forms a higher high, I no longer want to be in that trade. Now, of course, support works the same way. If I'm looking at support, this is an area where I reasonably expect prices to be held up. If I'm trading with this trend and price breaks out over resistance, well, hey, the trade's going in my favor. But if it turns down, forms a lower low, this could be an area where I want to set my stop and exit the market. So these swing highs and swing lows are very intuitive to place our stops to mitigate our risk. But this does cause some concerns, and it does with any technician, because what constitutes a swing high constitutes a swing low, and even a bigger question yet, which ones do I use? Sure, this is the most current high on this daily graph, but if I scroll back, there's other higher highs to consider. Sure. This is a swing low. Well, today we have a new swing low. If I go down my graph, I'll find swing lows all the way down the chart. Well, which one do I use? This is where analysis paralysis happens, and it's arguably one of the worst things that can happen. Because traders, believe me, I've seen this time and time again. I know we've all been guilty of it at one point in time if we've been trading long enough. And certainly I'm right there with you, right? We see this nice uptrend in the dollar again. It's moving about a thousand pips higher. All of a sudden we decide to join in the trend. Maybe we look to again buy against support for whatever reason. And what we do is set our stop underneath the swing low. We start off with a good pretense of risk management, right? And we include a positive risk reward ratio of our choosing and we have our limit up above. Now, again, rhetorical question. If you've done this, just hold it in the back of your mind and tell me or think about how you felt when the trade went against you. All of a sudden, prices start to break out underneath the low, but Somehow, as a trader, we say, hey, this is still a thousand pip uptrend. This was just a previous swing low. If I go ahead and back my stop down a little to the next swing low, all of a sudden price approaches and you find yourself moving your stop yet again. Well, you may look at this and say, well, reasonably, I'm still in a one to one risk reward ratio, not the end of the world. Well, price all of a sudden keeps on moving against you and you move to another swing low. And this just proceeds down the graph, right? All of a sudden you find yourself a month out, you're holding a trade that's gone against you four, five, six hundred, maybe a thousand pips. And you wonder, why didn't I just hold myself accountable and leave my stop there in the first place? Well, more often than not, that's the case. Remember, think of it as the fire exit for your trade. Now, when it comes to a fire, again, nobody wants to be in a burning building, but if we know where to get out and we can plan accordingly and be the first one out as opposed to hanging around longer than we reasonably expect, right? Well, that's a good thing. We go ahead and eliminate the dangers quickly as possible.
Again, the caveat is holding ourselves accountable to that. And one of the tools I want to talk about today is going to be pricing channels and how we can use that to hold ourselves accountable for our swing highs and swing lows. Now, I have another quick poll question here. I should have changed it to uh, read, are you tra trading with pricing channels? But we'll go with, are you trading with indicators? If you are, just select yes. If you're not, go ahead and select no. Now, I know some traders not fans of technical indicators. It's absolutely okay. I am, I'll tell you why, because technical indicators do indeed hold ourselves accountable. Again, it's not like the swing highs or swing lows where if I'm just eyeballing it using the price action methodology that I can very easily change my opinion, justify it in my mind for whatever reason, and all of a sudden I find myself in a big bad position. Well, the indicator, if it's obviously there, if I can read it and I see the line at a specific point, now not only am I at odds with myself and my trading plan, but I'm at odds with something that is clearly defined on my trading screen. So let me go ahead and close out that quick poll here. And what I want to do is add an indicator, and it is called the Donchian Channels. Now most charting package going to have this available if you're using it with trading view again go ahead and select donchin channel here and you're going to get a series of lines on your screen now what i'm going to do is open up the settings here for just a moment and i want to focus on the upper and the lower lines for now and i'm just going to thicken those out and show you uh, what we have available. Well, this is going to show me a swing low and a swing high for a specific number of periods. So, what I have here is actually going to be a 20 period swing high and swing low. So, the indicator, what it's doing, it's counting back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you get the idea, counting back 20 bars, and the lowest point going to be down here at 101 and the highest point going to be just over 114. So these are definable areas where I could say that I have a swing high and a swing low. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, 20 periods on a daily chart, quite a wide margin for a swing high and a swing low. It absolutely is, and I won't disagree with you, and I know most of our time we spend talking about day trading tactics, but I did want to include this because, hey, if I'm trading an intermittent swing, if I am trading a longer-term trend, I can still use these values accordingly, and as we know from our other webinar, even if I have wider stops, I could still reduce my lot size right to have a specific portion of my account through margin and leverage in terms of risk. So what's a day trader to do? Well, I can move these lines in, right? Of course, I can always move in, change my indicator to a lower setting. Now, what I'm doing is just reducing the number of periods in which my indicator is looking for a swing high and a swing low. Now, in terms of day trading, again, I'm typically not looking to hold my position for over a complete day. Preferably, I want to be in and out as quickly as possible. So maybe you want to retract this down to less than a week's worth of information. Again, day trading, we typically find the trend for a trading week or four and a half to five trading days. So a five period dungeon channel gives us a nice bracket or range to hold ourselves accountable where we can clearly say if the market has gone against us, we want to get out of there. Again, regardless of our opinion of the market in a bull scenario, if the prices fall down and form a five day low, well, maybe I don't want to be buying anymore. Vice versa, if I'm seeing prices go ahead and decline and I look to sell, but we see a new high over that high of 114, I want to go ahead and get out of the market 
as quickly as possible. But you can see now, as opposed to just moving my stop, now I've got something to hold myself accountable. If it reaches this line, I know that I have no business being in a long base position. Vice versa, if I see price reach this top line, I have no business being in a short position. So it clearly holds myself accountable to clear these values out. Now, of course, again, still on the daily chart. What's nice about it is this indicator works on any time frame. We can, of course, move into shorter graphs. Here is a one-minute value. Now, what you've noticed is the five period on the hourly, very tight, right? And rightfully so, because I'm only looking at five hours of information. But again, for a swing, I now clearly see the previous high and the previous low. So if I'm looking for a retracement off of a high, I can use this value for a stop. And if I'm looking for a retracement going back in the opposing direction, well, all of a sudden 112.48 may be a great place to consider managing my risk. So dodging channels, holding ourselves accountable for these swing highs and swing lows through visual representation. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me know if you have any questions or comments here. Uh, yes, this one going to ask about the Donchian period, saying, uh, which settings can we use? Well, basically, it's going to come down to how long you want to be in a position, right? If I use a 25 period setting on the hourly graph, well, now all of a sudden, I've got just about one day's worth of information graphically in terms of my line. So I could see my daily swing high and I could see my daily swing low. Well, if I'm looking for an interday range, that may be great. If I'm looking to hold my trade for a day or longer, sure, maybe that's something I want to consider. If I'm just holding it for a smaller period, again, I may reduce that value or just simply reduce the time frame of my graph. Basically, the settings aren't mutually exclusive, and we can define them either through the time frame or the setting of the indicator or both. So this is where a little practice and time in front of your chart working with the indicator is going to go a long way. Because ultimately I could say one setting and it couldn't work for you. And then all of a sudden you come back and you'd say, hey Walker, this setting didn't work for me. And my response is or would be, hey, use what works for you because what works for me might not work for you. But again, the ultimate purpose is this line in the indicator holds ourselves accountable. So when you do find the settings that work, you can stick with it and use it time and time again. The last thing I want to see you doing is, oh, hey, here's my swing low, here's my next swing low, and moving your stop back using a reverse trail, if you will, just extending your loss further and further against yourself because we know from the traders number one mistake we want to exit the markets as quickly as possible in the event that we are wrong okay let's move into a comment this one coming from Cobus saying hey got burned on the news last week and I'm right there with you Cobus the news creates volatility now for day traders that volatility cuts both ways if it goes in our favor, it can be amazing. It can be a tremendous boost to our PL, uh, meaning a quick take profit point. Well, on the other hand, when we see volatility increase, it can also mean a quick stop out. And I hope you don't mind, Kobe, this is, leads right into the back half of our portion of our webinar here today. What happens when volatility increases? Here's a great example. Well, I see that volatility increased during the election and all of a sudden we had a spike down and a spike up and this is a range of about 400 pips on either side of the market. Well, we need to adjust our risk management and our stops for these times of volatility. Now, if only we had an indicator that could help us read volatility out there in the market. The good news is we do 
And I want to spend a portion of our time talking about our next indicator to help us hold ourselves accountable for risk management. That's going to be ATR, or the average true range. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you're trading with ATR, or if you're familiar with the indicator, go ahead and uh, just simply type in a Y inside of the chat box now. If I say ATR, it's brand new for you, or you don't use it, absolutely okay. Um, but please go ahead and type in an N for me. This way, I can uh, kind of guide the presentation in a specific direction and spend more or less time on it as needed. And I see the Ys and Ns coming in. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your participation in today's program. So, ATR, what is it? First, let's go ahead and add it in. I'm going to right-click, go to Add Indicator, and type in ATR, or the average true range. Now, ATR is going to be down here in the bottom. And at first glance, again, at first glance, it may look like an oscillator but it's not. So if you're trying to read ATR like RSI or CCI or Stochastics, some of those other price tracking indicators, let me stop you right there because they're not, uh, they're not oscillators. They're not tracking price at all. Frankly, ATR does not care whether the market goes up, down, or stay sideways. What it does is just simply track volatility, in this example, as a currency pair in terms of pips. So what it's doing is looking at the average price movement for any specific number of periods. So if I see this large spike up in ATR, again, it doesn't necessarily mean that price is going up did happen to do so here, but it means that volatility is going to be increasing. Vice versa, if I start to see this line go down, it doesn't mean that price is going down. Again, I can pull this up. We actually see the opposite. Price is going up, but volatility is decreasing. Now, ultimately, why does this matter? Well, it comes down to this. If volatility is increasing, I may want to consider having a wider stop because if the market is moving on average 180 pips a day and all of a sudden I have a stop of 10 pips, well, any given oscillation, right or wrong in the market direction, could indeed take me out. So I may want to consider having a wider stop and a larger profit target, again considering my risk-reward ratios, through the use of ATR. However, when the market is slowing down, when we have these consolidation periods or volatility is just drying up, the market is moving on average 35 pips a day. Well, now that 10 pip stop seems a little more reasonable. And if I'm looking at my wider settings where I may be considering stops of 50 to 100 pips, that may be way too wide for this period on the chart. So that's why ATR is going to be a great indicator to help us rein in our stops and again give us an absolute value to hold ourselves accountable for risk management. So how do we read it? Well, first we need to realize that ATR is going to be in pips. For instance, if I take a look at current ATR, I can see it uh, right at 1.37. Now, what does 1.37 mean? Well, in the Japanese yen, the pip value is actually going to be the second digit past the decimal. So I need to use 1.37 and look at that as 137 pips. So there is going to be a little bit of conversion there. And remember, just where the pip values are for our favorite currency pairs. So 1.37 equals 137 pips. Long story short, looking at 14 periods on the daily graph means over the last 14 days of trading, just about three weeks of data, we have seen on average the dollar yen moving about 137 pips. Now this will change with other currency pairs. If we go ahead and cue this up 
for the euro dollar. Notice that my reading of ATR has changed. The current value is going to be right at about uh, 0 0.0096. Well, the difference here, again, is the pip value of the euro dollar. And we read the euro USD as the pip value being the fourth digit after the decimal. So OO or double lot 96 is actually going to be 96 pips of movement on average over the last 14 periods. But again, even with the euro dollar, notice the difference and disparity of volatility here. On average, as this price was declining, volatility reached a peak of about 170 pips a day. Now we're starting to see it slide back down and we're bouncing off of the lows at present, which is uh, just above 70 pips using this value. Okay, let me know if you have any questions on how to read ATR. If you need more information on that, now is the time to ask. Because from here, once we know how to read ATR, we can start using it in a variety of different fashions. Now, of course, the easiest way to use ATR is to think of it in terms of your trading and how long, again, you want to be in a trade. Remember, expectations are going to be everything. If, on average, the euro dollar moves 94 pips on any given trading day for the last 14 periods, well, if I want to be in my trade for a week, an ATR of 94 pips might be a bit tight. I may want to extend my risk out to include one or two periods of ATR. So two periods of ATR would now be, oh, let's go ahead and round it up to 100 pips. We'll make the math easy for yours truly on this side of the mic. I appreciate that. That's going to be uh, 200 pips or 100 times 2 for two days ATR. Well, from present levels, let's see. If I'm looking for a reversal here, again, just hypothetical, we can use it for bullish or bearish expectations. Now, I could see my risk of 2 times ATR is going to put my stop back underneath my swing low. And it would look a little something uh, like this. We would look again for a hypothetical reversal. 200 pip stop places my risk just at the 104.12. And from here, I can again double ATR to get my 1 to 2 risk reward ratio. If I look at a 2 times ATR stop, then I can look at a four-time ATR take profit point, again, giving me a nice one to two risk reward ratio. Now, this can be adjusted very easily. Again, if my time horizon or my span of my trade isn't this long, what can I do? Well, I can move it in. I can use a one ATR stop, puts me right at the swing low. And if I only expect to be in the trade for, oh, let's say for two days, well, I can look for two times ATR, reducing this back in, and now I still have a one to two risk reward ratio. I'm risking a day's worth of movement where I say if the market moves against me, basically all session, I want to close. If it moves in my favor, I want to see it go in my favor for at least two days worth of volatility. So it can help me quickly gauge these values in my trading. Now, of course, let's look at day trading applications. Sure, it's nice to know that on any given day, the market is going to move about 100 pips on the euro dollar. Well, what does that mean for me on any given day trade? Well, all of a sudden, if I'm only holding my trade for specific time frames, well, now I need to look at percentages of ATR. Basically, I like to look at our trading sessions in thirds and divide the calendar out by eight hours because eight just happens to divide easily into 24. Now, of course, you may not trade all eight hours of a specific session 
Again, we can have a webinar on trading sessions if you would like. But basically, most traders are watching the screen for any given eight hours where you may reside around the globe. So what I like to do is divide my daily ATR into a third. So now I'm saying on any given day, price may move 100 pips, but for my specific eight hours, I don't want to see it move more than a third of that value against whatever direction that I'm trading. So for the euro dollar, if I'm using a third of ATR, again, we can just take 100, divide it by 3. I know it doesn't come out even, but let's just call it uh, 33 pips. Sure, now I can use it for an intraday stop. So if I move in, start looking at my smaller values here, all of a sudden I've got a position where I can look, move into the market for whatever reason using my trading plan, and I'm setting up a trade where I don't have more than 30 pips of risk, and that means I'm looking at about uh, 60 pips of profit. Again, using that one to two, a risk-reward ratio to my advantage. Now, of course, we can shorten this even further. Some traders may not be taking a position for the entire session. Again, we can have this yet again. All of a sudden, if I'm looking at being in a trade for a maximum of a few hours, well, I can bring this in, use a sixth of daily ATR. Now I've got a 16 pip stop, and maybe I'm looking for 32 pips of profit. So again, it's all based off of volatility. If volatility increases, what would I want to do? Well, all of a sudden a 16 pip stop may be way too tight, or it may not be big enough. And I do indeed want to couple this with adjusting my lot size, because remember, even if I'm risking 16 pips or 100 pips, I don't want to be risking more than 1% of my account on any given uh, trading day. Okay, uh, yes, this one, going to be a comment on ATR saying, uh, can we use ATR in smaller settings? Yes, absolutely you can. And here we can see it on our five-minute chart. You can see the volatility advancing or declining. Now, the problem with this is during certain times of the day, volatility will decrease, and it becomes very hard to use ATR on these smaller settings. For instance, let's take a look at ATR overnight, and we have an ATR of 5 pips. Now, sure, we can use that value, but if we look at 5 pips, once we go ahead and include our cost for trading, the spread, or whatever cost you may incur with the broker of your choosing, well, that doesn't give us a whole lot of room on our trade, does it? And that five pips all of a sudden becomes very restrictive. For this reason, that's why I suggest you start using ATR on longer time frames, but then adjusting it by a percentage value again, based off of your expectations of how long you want to be in a trade, to go ahead and pinpoint that maximum value. So yes, while I can't apply ATR in a one-minute graph, it doesn't necessarily do me a whole lot of good only looking at 14 minutes worth of data, because if there's not a spike in the market, it's going to read flat. And that just puts me in a position where my stops may be way too tight, for practical application. Okay, uh, another great comment, this one coming in in regards to uh, ATR saying, uh, yes, do we have to use the 14 period setting? Now, this one's a lot like the um, Donchi channel indicator, right? We have a lot of different settings that we have available and we can pick and choose what we want, customizable, but what we'll notice is the difference with ATR, we're not going to have a whole lot of change based off of our settings. Now, there will be change. Don't <laughs> pin me in a corner and say that there's going to be none. There will be. But here's 14 ATR. We are currently reading at 94 pips. 
say I go ahead and change this out. Let's say I put in uh, 50 all of a sudden. Well, where are we at? We're at 86 pips. So it has decreased marginally, but what I've done is just flatten out the change in ATR a bit. And all it's given me is a range of 10 pips. Let me move this out to 200 here. Again, ATR uh, just at about 94 pips, which was the same setting that we had, if you remember, at 14. It's just going to take longer to see the changes in volatility, right? But ultimately, you're going to get a fairly similar number. The degree or the change is actually something that I want to be, at least in my opinion, fairly reactive because if I see a spike in the market, and let's take the uh, presidential election spike here on the 9th. I want to adjust my trading for that. If I'm using 14 periods in my setting, it's not going to take very long to get that calculation juiced into the number that I see on the screen. And we can see the sharp reaction here. It only took a period or two to reflect that large spike in volatility. Now, on the flip side, if I'm using something like a 200 pip, or excuse me, a 200 uh, setting on ATR, well, will that spike be included? Yes, but it's going to be averaged out over just, for the better part, about three quarters of a year worth of trading. So it's going to take a long time for that spike to become influential, especially if I'm a day trader or an intermediate swing trader. A, the 200 period setting is just not effective. I want to get this data. I want to adjust it. If anything, I'd rather multiply the percentages forward or back based off of my preferences, having an updated value a sooner rather than later. Okay, long distance high five. Happy to have you here on today's uh, presentation. This one going to be a chart request. Not too many chart requests today, but we can use these samples to take a look at the market. And this one saying, uh, pull up the Kiwi dollar. Sure. Absolutely. Kiwi dollar blasting off daily highs. Now, we talked about commodity markets yesterday doing relatively well against the buck. First, let's go in and take a look at a scenario using the Don Chin channel. So what I want to do is keep my daily chart up here. Let's go in and add in our Don Chin channels. There we go. And what I want to do is take a look at the swing high and the swing low. Now, if we're looking for a reversal, again, based off of our opinion, we could be looking for price to bounce, or we could be looking at this as a retracement in the downtrend. Again, regardless of your opinions, we can still use these values. Where's our swing low? Well, this is at 69.2, uh, 69 which would signal that prices are breaking a new low. So if I'm looking at a bounce in price, I could consider placing a stop underneath this low, again, a 20-period low, which would suggest I no longer want to be long the market. Now, what's nice about this as well, one point I didn't mention is we can use this to manage our risk using a positive risk-reward ratio, but we can also use this as a trailing stop. If price continues to move up higher, well, we can trail our stop along this bottom line until price goes back and makes a new 20-period low. Here is a great case in point. Here is a retracement that we had earlier. Again, a similar pattern for the Kiwi over 2016, a gradual uptrend with sharp retracements. If you went and looked for a bounce off of the low and you trailed your stop along the line, you would exit the market locking in profit when price again made a new 20 period low. Now, would you pick up every single pip along the way? No, you wouldn't. Rarely do we have that opportunity in trading, but it would allow you to stay in the trend maybe longer than you initially planned. And on this trade or this instance, we would see uh, we'd be locking in about uh, 360 pips from low to low. Now, will that work every time? No, but that's okay because we still have that initial point where we say, 
enough is enough. I no longer want to be in the market. Just simply get me out of there. So that is yet another way that we can use the pricing channels to go ahead and trail our stops. Now, I've had a lot of questions on trailing stops, and as we continue our focus on tips, tools, and tactics, I do promise I will work in a full webinar on the trailing stops. So, again, just a little uh, taste there with the Donchi channels, but uh, stay tuned for that programming. And speaking of, I have just a few short minutes remaining in our webinar, and with that, I do want to get out my webinar survey. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I want to know what you thought about today's tips, tools, and tactics webinar on placing stops. I want to know the good. I want to know the bad. I want to know the ugly. I want to know everything in between because your feedback matters and it allows me to continue to bring you the best presentations across markets, which, of course, is my goal day in and day out. Please select my name. That is Walker England if you forgot it. And work your way to number seven. This is where you can note any topics or current events that you would like to discuss in future webinars. I'm pleased to say a lot of you have um, been mentioning risk management in your surveys, but guys, we can talk about virtually anything under the trading sun. So please, let me know. More indicators, price action, risk management, entries, exits, breakouts, retracements. None of it is off limits, as long as it's related to trading, ladies and gentlemen. Um, go ahead. Fill it in, and uh, once you've done that, click Done. It will beam the form back off to yours. Truly, I will give it a read and make amendments to the curriculum as needed. Now, some of you have been asking about webinar recordings. Yes, they are going on YouTube, and you can find them at the following link. I do have today's presentation recorded. And uh, give me a short few hours. I promise I will get it up by the end of the business day. And uh, you will find the recordings here. Here's yesterday's. If you want to catch yesterday's analysis on day trading markets, dollar and yen pairs, well, go back, watch it, pause it, review it, even give it a like if you are so inclined. Okay, uh, with that being said, I do need to talk about our webinar schedule and tomorrow, I'm going to be off the mic. Yes, I'm going in for some mandatory training, which means I will not be hosting our Wednesday's uh, Day Trading Markets webinar. That's okay. We still have one coming up on Friday. But my next webinar on the schedule is going to be on Thursday for another Tips, Tools, and Tactics event. Now, I'm going to go through and read through everybody's surveys to decide the topic, but uh, check in with me on Thursday morning at 9 o'clock, and this is going to be for tips, tools, and tactics. Of course, you do need to register if you haven't done so, and it's absolutely free. You can do so at the following link, and let me type that in, cut and paste it, so you get that as well. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to bring today's event to a close. I do want to say thank you for your attendance for today's webinar event. I know you have choices when it comes to your trading education. Thank you uh, for making that daily FX. Now, in terms of risk management, it does take practice. But I think the overriding theme of this webinar is choose something that holds yourself accountable. Now, maybe it's price action. Maybe it's something we didn't talk about today. That's absolutely okay. But ATR and something like pricing channels are available on virtually any graph, and it's something that we can visually see where we can say, hey, I shouldn't be in this trade anymore. Just go ahead and get me out of there. That's what risk management is all about. Okay, guys, that's going to be it for me. I do want to wish you all the best of luck in your trading. Come back. Join me on Thursday as we pick up our trading tools and tactics webinars. I can't wait. Hope to see you all then. Have a good one.